Yes. <laughs> you and I have been familiar with the term room. The word room is in the Quran. There is a chapter of the Quran named chapter room, Surah Room. And room in the Quran refers to the Eastern Christian Orthodox Church. And the Quran speaks positively about room. The Ottoman Turkish government was consistently at war with Rome, Eastern European Christian states, Bulgaria, Greece, Romania, and so on, Russia. Some of my critics have been pointing out to me that the Ottomans were not the invaders at all times, that sometimes the Rome were the ones who instigated warfare. Be that as it may, the, the constant state of warfare, the constant state of warfare between Ottoman Islam and Rome led to very bitter feelings amongst people of Greece, for example, against Islam. When a Turkish civil war takes place and the Turkish army invades Syria on behalf of NATO, remember that there is a prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, that you will make an alliance with Rome. And secondly, there's a verse of the Quran, which I want to introduce to your viewing audience for the first time. The Quran says that in time to come you will find, this is in the fifth chapter, Surah Al-Ma'idah, and it is around maybe 80-something. In time to come you will most certainly find that those who are closest in love and affection to you would be those who say we are Christians. It could be Christianity of the Western side, which is an alliance with Jewish Zionism. So the only other thing left is Rome. That the Quran is speaking about Christians in Greece and Bulgaria and Romania, who at this time have very bitter feelings against Islam because of relations with the Ottoman Empire. But as we stand up and proclaim that the Ottomans did things which were in conflict with Islam, and the most notorious example is one that I pointed several times on your program, and that is when they conquered Constantinople, they shamefully, disgracefully, and manifestly, sinfully, took the greatest cathedral of Christianity, of Rome, of Eastern Christianity, Hagia Sophia, which had been a cathedral which was used for a thousand years, Morris, a thousand years. And this was the religious and spiritual heart of Rome and they transformed it into a masjid. In doing that, they plunged a dagger into the heart of Rome. And so the bitterness has been there all these years. But the Quran has said that there are Christians who are going to be the closest in love and affection to you. And as I have stood up and others will stand up to denounce what the Ottomans did with that Hagia Sophia, and to proclaim that on that day when we conquer Constantinople, we do three things. Number one, we will read the cathedral to the Christians. Number two, we will apologize to them for what was done to their church for five, six hundred years by misguided Muslims, and then by a misguided Mustafa Kamal, who transformed it into a museum. We will apologize to them for that. And number three, we will restore the name of the city to the name used by Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him. He referred to it as Constantinople, so Mustafa Kamal cannot prevent me from using the name Constantinople. So we're not going to use the name Istanbul anymore. Forget that. It is back to Constantinople. When we speak like this, then the people of Eastern Europe 
wake up to a different version of Islam, something with which they can identify. And so I am suggesting to you a third thing. Not only will a civil war in Turkey attract Kurdish intervention, and attract intervention from the Arab world, particularly from North Africa, on the side of those who are fighting NATO, and therefore fighting the Turkish armed forces. But number three, that will also attract Christians from Eastern Europe, who I hope will join the struggle. So it's going to be an alliance between Muslims and Christians. And our Prophet has said that that alliance is going to come in the last age. So an invasion of Syria by the Turkish armed forces is going to bring momentous change to the world and going to change the chessboard in a manner that even they cannot expect today. Are you following me? I'm following you very well. I dare say it could be the beginning of a, of a world war, really. Yes, the, the, the Turkish attack on an invasion of Syria is going to be the beginning of what will eventually become the Third World War. But I don't really recognize it as the third, because I say the first and the second were actually two parts of one war. The Second World War was unfinished business from the first one. Hmm? Uh, so the Third World War is coming. And the Third World War is going to pit the two world powers, the American led alliance, the NATO alliance, and the Russian led alliance against each other. And Israel wants these two to mutually knock out each other, mutual destruction. So, what is left of the world after that, the Zionists can rule over the world. Hmm? But I believe there's going to be a series of wars which eventually will culminate. What the Christians call Armageddon and the Prophet Muhammad called the Malhamah. So I think this is, this is enough for today that I have, I have presented this analysis of the implications of the continued unrest in Turkey and the likelihood that continued unrest with, with fuel being poured into the fire to keep it going, it's likely to produce this outcome of the government seeking a diversion and therefore launching an invasion of Syria. And if they do launch that invasion of Syria, it's going to be the beginning of the end. And it's going to provoke, it's going to provoke uh, these kinds of responses. Namely, the Kurdish response, the response from the Arabs, and the response from Christian Eastern Europe. Thank you very much. You're going to please a lot of people here. Uh, I've been asked so often for weeks and months for your opinion on what is going on. Yes, I, I may fail to mention to you that I was speaking to you from Pakistan. I just arrived in Pakistan a few days ago, and I'm on my, my way to Moscow. Uh, I'm on my way to Moscow, and from Moscow to Caracas to Trinidad. So I'm going to spend the whole month of Ramadan in Trinidad. And on my way back in October, uh, I am expecting an invitation from the State University of Moscow, where I'll be delivering some lectures and also entering into dialogue with the Russian Orthodox Church. I'm looking forward to that, Morris. I'm looking forward to that. Well, are you going to be giving t talks in, in Pakistan and in Russia? No, no, we have no lectures in Pakistan. Um, no lectures in Russia on this trip, but on my way back in October, there will be some lectures, yes. So, in, 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 um, so you're just, in Moscow. you would just be sightseeing? No, no, meeting people with whom I'll be dialoguing in October, meeting, having to, over the French call a tete a tete. <laughs> okay. Uh, being, being courtesy calls and so on. And of course, looking around Moscow. And judging how many woolen clothing, what kind of woolen clothing I have to need for October. Yes.